This video is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make it with Squarespace. What is going on guys, Joel here, back with another video. And while I get many requests of what's on my iPhone, which is coming very soon, I also get asked, what do I use to edit my videos? So I figured, while I show you what I do use to edit, why not do a what's on my Mac as well since it has been a very long time since my last one. So believe it or not, I still use a late 2013 Retina 15 inch MacBook Pro. The configurations are right here in case you care to know, but this is what I use as my daily machine, whether I am at home or on the road. It is connected to this curved LG monitor because I could not work off of a 15 inch display at all times. I need some workspace and this 34 inch monitor does the job. But diving into it, this is what's on my Mac. When I am not on my computer, I have this pretty cool flip clock screensaver that gives it a retro look. If you're interested in this, I'll leave a link to this in the description as well as other things that I mentioned in this video. So starting at the menu bar up top, these are either apps or useful tools that I use on a daily basis. First is ScreenFlow. This is actually what I'm using right now to record this video. So ScreenFlow is an app that allows you to record video, audio, and lets you edit it all in the app itself. You can do a variety of things from zooming into a specific spot and all that, but this is a really useful app if you are into screen recording or need to screen record. This is what I've been using for many years when I would do jailbreak tutorials and Mac tutorials. A top pick if you are looking into screen recordings. Now next is a thing called Hidden Me. Remember when you're little and your parents will tell you to clean up your messy room and all you did was throw away all your clothes, toys, etc either under your bed, in your dresser, or in the closet. Pretty much anywhere where it's not visible anymore. Well, this is kind of like that, except for your desktop. So this simply allows you to hide or unhide your desktop icons. Um, right now I have it hidden with uh, ScreenFlow, but this is what my mess looks like at the moment. But uh, you can simply hide them just like that. So it's a really simple tool that just allows you to hide or unhide uh, your desktop icon. So yeah, if you want to make it look clean, this is it. Now speaking about cleaning, this next app is called Clean My Mac. So I've been using this for several years as well and it's saved me a lot of storage over time and has kept my Mac up to speed. It gives you the status of how much space you have on your hard drive, uh, how much RAM you have, you want to free it up. Also your battery life and also the trash. So uh, opening up Clean My Mac, here you'll be able to do different things like Smart Cleanup where it'll just gather up all the information and then uh, trash whatever you don't need. But you can go through your system junk, photo junk, mail attachments, things like that, or large and old files. Uh, but one of my main things that I use this for is uninstaller. Uh, it allows you to uninstall different apps from your computer, like fully uninstall them. Um, even if you downloaded like a file with alongside that certain app, it'll also trash that file. So that way you don't have anything uh, left behind on your Mac, like say a little folder or something. Clean my Mac is definitely useful if you want to keep your Mac up to speed. Next, we have Adobe Creative Cloud, which if you aren't aware what this is, it's Adobe's cloud services. So with this, it's a monthly subscription, uh, but you have access to all Adobe suites, uh, meaning Photoshop, Illustrator, all that stuff, even uh, Premiere Pro and everything. So if you want or need, all this subscribe to the creative cloud because that's all they offer now i believe but it always keeps you up to date as you see here there's an update for photoshop that's what i have installed right now i have photoshop and lightroom and i use that to edit any photos or create thumbnails or work on different designs or something um, but yeah that is um, creative cloud so photoshop here where if you're unaware what it does you can edit different things or design different things uh, but I also use uh, lightroom which is here if I ever need to tweak a photo. I hardly use this, I use Photoshop more for it whenever I do need to edit some photos. Um, not a huge person in editing photos, but I try. <laughs> if you wanna follow my Instagram, that there might be some photos that I've edited 
on Lightroom or Photoshop on there. Now next is a thing called Splash Top Streamer. So here, what this does, it allows me to remotely access my computer from anywhere. So my smartphone or if I'm on my iPad, it's extremely useful when I'm out and I either forget to grab something from my computer, like a different file, or when I upload a video and need to tweak something, I can easily edit it while I'm out. It has saved me many, many times, but yeah, it allows you to remotely access your computer wherever you're at. The next to that is M installer. And this is what I use for different plugins when I'm editing video. So we've been watching my videos for the past couple of months. I've been using different things like different titles, different call outs. So different text tracking and all that stuff. And that's easily done with M installer. They're pretty pricey because they start around like $50 for a package of several of them, but definitely is worth it. If you want to step up your video editing game, this adds a little bit more of professionalism, I would say, because it looks a lot better than just your normal plain text showing up on the screen. It gives you a little effect and all that stuff. So definitely worth looking into if you want to step it up. So next to that is Better Snap Tool. And this is an app that has helped me be more efficient when I'm working on a multitask. So either I'm doing some research or emails, things like that. With a few shortcut keys, I'm able to quickly set one window to the left half of the screen. Um, and then the other one can be on my right half of the screen. So I can easily do that. You can do a lot more with it, but that's the main purposes I use it for just to snap things to the left half of the screen and then the others to the right side of the screen. Now next is a little coffee cup here called caffeine. And what this does, it simply allows me to prevent my Mac from going to sleep and displaying the screensaver. So if I'm ever working on something that I want to avoid the screen going to sleep, this is something that's very, very helpful. Now going down to my dock, here is all the apps that I pretty much use. I normally don't have it this cluttered, but just for the video sake, I want to just have them all here. But first is Finder, of course. This is just a file manager for Mac, of course. If you're already using Mac, you already know what that is. Uh, I do use this standard email app here um, because it does the job. And next is Chrome. This is uh, my web browser of choice on my Mac. Surprisingly, I use this on my Mac and on my iPhone, I use uh, Safari. But yeah, I don't know. I just prefer Google Chrome on uh, Mac and next I use the calendar app. This is just a standard calendar app So next is the notes app, which is self-explanatory. It's an app to take notes I used to use an app called Evernote But since Apple has been updating the features on the notes app the past few Mac OS updates I've come back and ditched using Evernote the Mac notes app allows me to share the same note with other users if I ever need to and also sync across all my Apple devices. So it's another reason I like it because with Evernote, you have to pay extra now if you want it to sync to more than two devices, which is the main reason I stopped using it. But yeah, these, this is my notes. I always keep uh, different ideas, uh, things that I'm working on. Now next is the reminders app and this is something I use also all the time. I usually have a lot on my mind and forget some stuff. So the reminders app has definitely been a lifesaver, helps me remember things. Uh, it syncs to my iOS devices of course because this is a Mac app. So if I create something here, it'll show up on my iPhone or iPad. This allows me to keep things in check, remember things, things that I need. Um, and also reminders to post a video and also reminders of everything else, like uh, different bills, things like that. So it's very useful and definitely a tool to use if you have a lot of stuff going on. So next is another app that I've been using for a very long time, and that is TweetBot. Uh, if you've been living under a rock, TweetBot is another Twitter client. And one reason I like it is because everything is still in order, like the times. It's not scattered from something that happened earlier or the top tweet or something like that. And also now that there's no Twitter app for Mac, this is one of the few options to go with. If you want to have Twitter on your Mac, unless if you go directly through a web browser, now, since we're talking about social media, the next one is Flume. And what this is, it's simply Instagram on your Mac. Uh, you're able to see different posts, all your timeline. And also you are able to search different things, uh, different people, just like if you would 
on your iOS device or Android device, see your notifications, reply to different DMs or uh, view your likes. And you can also even post directly from Flume. Uh, this is a paid app, but if you have the free version, which is what I have, you have limited features, but it's useful if you're on your Mac and you need to uh, use Instagram or want to use Instagram. Uh, this is Flume, and if you're not following me on Instagram yet, we can connect there. Leave me a comment on one of my latest posts, um, and then I'll reply back. Now, before we continue with what app I use to do all my video editing, I wanted to give a quick shout out to our sponsor for today's video, which is Squarespace. So whether you need a domain, website, or want to sell some merch, Squarespace makes it very easy to do. It's an all-in-one platform that lets you create an awesome website by simply setting up a domain or transferring your current domain, then choosing a template as a starting point that suits your style, then customize it to your needs, and you are good to go. Within minutes, I was able to create a cover page for my channel with a brief description showcasing what the channel is about, a way to contact me for any business inquiries, my YouTube channel link, and where to find me on social media, all while having a video of mine running in the background. It's pretty cool and it was very easy to make. With award-winning 24-7 customer support, you can get your website up in no time with Squarespace. So if you are down to start your own business, Head over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And then when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com forward slash jbtech17 to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Next is what I use to edit all my videos and you probably have guessed it already. That's Final Cut Pro. So I've been using Final Cut for several years. Actually, it's what I started using when I even began doing YouTube videos. Uh, I've been going back and forth between this and Adobe Premiere. I would have to say Final Cut Pro is my choice of preference when it comes to editing my videos uh, because I wouldn't say I'm an expert or anything like that at editing videos, but I will say I'm pretty experienced and knowledgeable when it comes to using Final Cut Pro. So I'm able to quickly go through a video, cut it up, add different edits, transitions, all that good stuff. And since I know the keyboard shortcuts, it makes things a lot easier too. So that's why I've kind of had, I've struggled to adapt to Adobe Premiere because I'm so used to Final Cut. If you've been keeping up with my videos as of late, the past few months, you probably noticed that I've started using like different transitions or different titles. Um, and that's all thanks to that M installer that I spoke about earlier. These are different titles that you can download as a package. And um, yeah, like these here are just call outs so you can uh, edit these the way you like it, different colors, different text, all that stuff, and then pinpoint a certain part of a video, so like an object or anything, or I have this title here. These are what I use normally as my title in the beginning of the video, which I probably did at the beginning of this video or throughout the video maybe. But in the comments below, let me know what video software you use to edit videos if you do edit any kind of video. Now next is ScreenFlow, which I did mention earlier. This here allows me to record anything on my screen and then edit all that together here on the same app. But uh, this is ScreenFlow, very useful if you wanna record anything from video and audio on your Mac. And next we have Photoshop, which I did speak about earlier and I'm pretty sure you already knew what it was, uh, but allows you to edit uh, photos or do any design work or anything like that, but that's Photoshop there. I also have Lightroom, of course. This is what I sometimes use to edit photos. Um, if photos is all you do, Lightroom is something to definitely check out. And next I have Messages, and this is one of the reasons I really enjoy using a Mac is because of this app, surprisingly. Uh, I'm able to easily reply to those who text me on my iPhone straight from my computer and it syncs across all my Apple devices. Next is iTunes. I hardly use iTunes. Um, there's not much to say about iTunes. It's iTunes. <laughs> the only reason I really use it is to back up my iPhone before a jailbreak or need to restore my device. I use it occasionally to listen to Apple Music, but majority of the time, uh, what I use to listen to music is the next app, which is Spotify. This is, as you may know, a music streaming service, and this is where I have a lot of my music saved to. And something about Spotify just makes me want to use it over Apple Music. I don't know why, maybe it's the user interface or like the whole black scheme going on, 
Uh, but I don't know. Do you feel like that? Let me know in the comments below. But after that, we have an app called Deliveries, which it looks like some stuff have been delivered. Um, but this allows you to track your packages and syncs with iCloud. So when you are using the app on your iPhone or iPad, it'll also sync to those devices too. So you can keep track of all your packages that are coming in the mail or that you've delivered. Now, next up is 1Password. And this, I don't know how, how many times it saved my life, but if you are tired of remembering all your passwords for different things, 1Password is definitely something you need to consider and check out because it tracks all your passwords. You, you manually put it in um, and it'll store all your passwords and also works with iOS and Android. So by typing in your initial password, it'll unlock your vault and then you have all your passwords here. But other than that, this is what I use on my Mac on a day to day basis. Let me know what your top apps are in the comments below. I'm interested in knowing what you use on your Mac or if you're a Windows user and you're watching this, um, let me know what apps you use. I don't know why you're watching this, but uh, maybe you want a Mac soon. Um, but this is what I use on a day to day basis. And uh, if you enjoyed this video and want to see a what's on my iPhone version, Definitely let me know by hitting that like button or maybe an Android version because I do use Android as well. But let me know by hitting that like button as it not only lets me know that you want to see those videos, but it also shows support to the channel. Also, if you're not yet following me on social media like Twitter, Instagram and or Facebook or even Snapchat, if people still use that, I'll leave my links down below. And lastly, if you feel like being awesome, be sure to subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss any future videos. And also be sure to hit that notification bell. That way you get notified when I do launch a new video. Thanks a lot for watching guys. I appreciate your support very much, but I will catch you all on the next one. All right? Peace.